Well, I managed to sort out the line somehow on my camera itself, so I might not have to autocorrect anymore. Under the sea, under the sea, darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. What's up, guys? DP here from Team Triple Drive coming today with a deck profile of my prisms. Um, this is the Labrador version, which I prefer to the Garn version because Garn is more defensive, Labrador is more offensive. I prefer to come up more fast, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, and plus I prefer Labrador's art. I will profile Garn to you if you want, uh, but I, I don't know. I just prefer Labrador quite a bit. The Garn version would be a bit different from this, not just by grade threes. So anyway, for the grade threes, we play four Labradors. Above it and one garnet. I feel like nine grade threes is quite important in this deck because you do constantly rewrite uh, with the bird stride. So I feel that it's important to have nine grade threes. I did have a free slot since I only play ten grade twos. I could either play a shrine enabler or another grade three, and I chose to play another grade three. Plus, garnet can can, uh, can sometimes come in quite handy in terms of being a defensive card. Then we play four Princess Celtic. Now Princess Celtic is great. Her ability is when her attack hits on Vagant or Rhaegar, you can a special counter blast one and choose to bounce it back and draw. So she doesn't need to bounce prisms. She is restricted to a special counter blast and she gets to draw. Early game you can rush, you can bounce and have your field stay safe from getting attacked by your opponent. Then we play four regular Celtic. I like regular Kelsey because her ability to just give plus 4k is strong both offensively and defensively, so I want to see her quite a bit. Uh, then I play 3 Rosa, 2 Rosa, my bad, 2 Rosa, only 10 great Um She gives herself another unit plus 3k, can be very powerful offensively and defensively, so I like that card. And she's searchable, that's why I don't play more of her. She's searchable with our little crit trigger which we'll get to in a sec. Right, for the grey ones I play four cookery. Uh, this deck does counter last quite a bit, slowly, but it does add up. And if you're not lucky enough to get late early enough, it might add up too quickly. So you'll feel powerless later game. And you really don't want to do that. So, four cookery. Full limb break enabler, because this is Labrador version, and we can potentially hit our opponent with plus a K plus a crit um, while they're still on grade 2. And if we do that, they get to high damage and we kill them with Vert Stride. Also, Vert Stride, yeah, this helps with Vert Stride because you don't want to be at 4 damage since this meta can make you go from 4 to 6 very easily, so you want to stay at a comfortable like 2 to 3 damage if you can. So this helps you not have to actually be at limb break to use limb break. Which is what Limbrick Enable does. Yeah, well done. I'm good. Um, Leite. Leite's ability to counter charge, soul charge, and give power is very, very important in this deck. Because we do use soul a bit, quite a bit, with um, Celtic and Rosa. So it is very important. And also, again, power is what we do. So, yeah. For Emerald. Three Emerald. Oh my god, I can't brain. My brain is dead, I'm sorry. Um, three Emerald. When she's bounced, you choose. If you have a Prism Vanguard, you choose two of your Prism units, bounce them. If you did, choose one of your other units and it gains plus 5000 power. Uh, very good card because you can G Guardian, bounce her, bounce two more units, give plus 5000 power with her ability, and then give plus 8000 power with those other units. If you have Rosa, then you can uh, Soul Blast 3 and give plus 9000 power to your Vanguard herself. So defensively, this deck can get to really high numbers very, very very easily so yeah very good card and offensively also it helps you just to get more power so you swing for even bigger numbers and potentially killing your opponent even faster for the zeros we play Akari as a starter now there's something that not a lot of people play at least in prisms uh, why I play her is simple she bounces units so you can during the main phase get even more power up after you set up your field um, with like Hemeral, Celtic, you don't really want to use Leite because you can't normal call her afterwards. But 
she also draws a card and she has harmony. All those things are quite important for this deck just because how I play it. Then I play 4 heals, 4 draws, and 8 critical all prisms. Now the clear crit is amazing. When she's bouncing, you can plus 1, reveal a card named herself, and return back to the deck. If you do search for. Uh, if you have. Wait, do you have City Banger? You have to have a prism. Yeah, you have to have, have Prism Banger, but that doesn't matter in this deck, you do. Uh, if you do search for a great one or higher card with Rosa. Bit or clearance card name, so you can get the grade one clear, the two grade two roses, and the grade three vert. Um, since we do rewrite all the time and we constantly need grade threes, this is really good to search for grade threes. And it's also a recyclable crit, so you know, this can uh, is one of the cards that can slowly add up the counter blast for this deck, which is why I play Kukri. Right, so for the Jizo, we play four copies of the Amazing, where is her? Because as soon as we get a grip on her. Ah, uh, god, that came out wrong. Uh, four copies of Sunshine Verts, one being in a wedding dress, because why not? Her ability to be next stage while being a Bermuda card is really good, because we can do multi attacks uh, with both Vanguard and Rearguard, and because I do play the Labrador version when I'm swinging with my Vanguard, I'm swinging with an extra 10k and crit. Which means my bone does really not want to take my Vanguard's hits. And yeah, she's very good. She bounced a lot of. Well, she bounced two Prism units if you needed her to. Um, so if, say, you don't have Bert as the heart, she can still bounce units, and then if you bounce Emeralds, Emeralds can bounce the rest for you. Very important. Then I play four copies of Princess Labrador. Ah, there we go, got it. This card is really good because it's free. Um, it's Gem Break 2 enabler, which is not super important in terms of being Gem Break 2, since obviously we don't play any Gem Break 2 cards. Uh, but what is important about her is she can get you a lot of cards in G Zone face up very quickly. So when you go into this card, you have already a bunch of cards you're ready to bounce. And I play one Nectaria just to be flipped up by Laura's most of the time. I never really used her yet, but she's better to run than the other on hit cards because it does the same thing but plus 5k instead of plus 3k and you just need harmony, etc. etc. Uh, then to finish off the strides, we'll play two Olivia. Um, Olivia is multi attacks and gain crit. And since we are playing Prisms, when cards are bounced, we Soul, soul Blast a lot of cards and gain a lot of power, so very very powerful because we can get multi-attacks, gain crits and also power up our rear guards during the battle phase. Then play 2, Nasha and 2 Leona. Nasha is just generic 20k G guard and Leona is the card that I love. Uh, when you G guard with her you can bounce a unit uh, then call in from your hand. If that unit has the same card, uh, card name as you bounced the unit called gets plus 5,000 power, uh, plus 5,000 shield. But not only that, then you can use something like you bounce Emerald, Emerald bounces Leyte and Celtic, Emerald gives plus 5k to the Vanguard, both uh, Celtic and Leyte give plus 8k to the Vanguard, then Rosa Soul Blast 3 and gives plus 9k to the Vanguard and to herself, etc. etc. So it's very powerful defensively. Uh, one thing to note, I've seen people use it wrong occasionally. If you uh, bounce a unit, you have to, you actually have to call in from hand. You can't just bounce and not call. Uh, the only time then you wouldn't call if, is, for example, if you're against um, Spectral, not Spectral, Phantom Blaster, and you cannot call cards from hand to Guardian Circle, at which point this effect gets cancelled out by Phantom Blaster. So, yeah. Um, I want to quickly mention Loris. Loris is another card that's really good and is another reason that I play. Um, Akari. So what you can do is have two columns that are in harmony so then you have more than just one Vanguard centric attack if you keep Akari out for long enough. Another thing with Loris, you bounce a lot of units. Uh, you, you can bounce like four or five um, units and get 
a lot of power on her or on the rear guard, say if you bounce 24, say you have like Rosa, you bounce 4 units, give a lot of power to Rosa from the units bounce, Rosa's ability is Soul Blast 4, get plus 12k herself and 12k to the Vanguard, and then you call a Kari and you call another uh, card behind, both get Harmony, the conditions are made for all of the units being in Harmony, uh, and then boom, you, you actually, well, you need to attack with Loris first to give plus 5k, plus 5k, plus 5k here, so yeah. But, this has been it for the deck profile guys, um, I hope you enjoyed it, I'm hoping to get some recordings done with this deck, I do love it a lot, it's really really fun, it's, I don't know, I have Harmony, I have uh, the Garnet version of the deck as well, well I can, at least I can build it, uh, but I just really really like Labrador, something about her, it's probably my, calling to my 13 year old crush on an Emmy, so yeah. Uh, but this has been it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been DB from Team Triple Drive signing out. Peace.